how planets formed, and why do rocky planets have a tendency to be closer to the star and gas giants being further away? That is what we're going to talk about today. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the Science of Elite with Down to Earth Astronomy. We continue to go through a solar system formation and talk about, about how um, a solar system formed. Last time we talked about how a cloud collapses and forms a protostar. And just to form a quick recap where we left off last time. We just had our star formed and around it we have this um, spinning cloud of material gas um, that is slowly beginning to form itself into a disk um, and this is happening much in the same way as if you uh, if you ever seen uh, seen videos of people spinning tires up extremely quickly you'll see them begin to get pulled out uh, into a more like uh, like a discus shape rather than being um, more round the same thing kind of happens here it's rotating so slowly the gas will begin to accumulate onto a a disk spinning around um, around the star and this is kind of where we uh, where we start from today we we we've, we've formed the disk it's right now just that like tiny tiny pieces of rock and most dust so there's not a whole lot in terms of planets um but we do have the star formed and um uh, yeah so let's have a quick overview of the forces that we're currently working with right now first of all of course we have the gravity from the star trying to pull um pull the gas and all the, the small debris inwards and of course we have the uh, also some internal forces with the internal gravity where the objects inside the the disk is trying to uh, pull towards each other but we also have the solar wind pushing outwards that's going to be very important um, in a little bit now when we talk about um, materials in astrophysics we divide them into three categories we have hydrogen helium and everything else and that is basically what would be referred to as either metals even though it's not always metals it's just if you talk about a star's metallicity so how metallic it is it's how much is there of everything that's not hydrogen helium so if i refer to something as metals it's not necessarily iron or aluminium it can be anything um it's more commonly now begin to be referred to as the pollution of the star even though it's well yeah so this is actually quite interesting because this tells us the kind of composition of this of this disk and Originally, of course, when the unit was, was created, we pretty much exclusively had hydrogen and helium. And, but as the early stars were often very, very big, very, very bright stars, they were very short, they would begin to produce heavy and heavier elements. That means the later in the universe life that a star is created, the more polluted it is, the more metals are in the star. Um, so we probably wouldn't see a lot of rocky planets in the early universe, but now that we are here like 13 billion years later, we are definitely have created enough of these heavy elements that we can begin to, pre to produce planets. But we have all this, the cloud is pretty much just hydrogen, helium, and other stuff um, spinning around. And now we have the solar wind that kind of pushes on the cloud, push it, or the, the disk, pushing it outwards, trying to push it outwards. But it's not pushing equally on the different types of materials. It's much like, much like if you imagine uh, you would take a handful of dirt with some, like, some small pebbles in it, small rocks, and also some very fine sand, and you throw that up in the air uh, on a windy day, you would see all the rocks would pretty much just go straight up and come, come down again, but all the sand would be blown away with the wind. Or if you imagine a... Um, the wind, a, a strong wind blowing over a dirt road, you would also imagine that that all the like the light dust and and and, and sand would be blown away, leaving um, the rocks, the, the heavier rocks exposed. Much the same thing is actually happening in these disks in the early in an early solar system. All the lighter elements like uh, helium, hydrogen, is being blown away from the inner part of the solar system by the solar wind, just leaving all the heavier materials and that means that now we have all the heavier materials called an inner solar system almost purely consisting of heavier materials um, and we have the outer solar system which have a higher density of the lighter materials um, um, like gases so now these materials are beginning to slowly clump together 
And this is purely just because of, of gravity. So you have one small rock and another small rock. When they come close to each other, they have a tendency to want to stick together because of they have a small but yet important gravity pulling them towards each other. And now comes a third rock forming a slightly larger clump. And now a fourth and a fifth and slightly this small clump is growing. And the gravity from this clump is getting more and more dominant. It's pulling in more and more materials around it. It's it's kind of it's not the same forces, but it kind of looks like if you if you ever tried to put oil in water, and you stir it around, you will see all the oil uh, floating on top of the water will form into small droplets, and slowly these droplets, as they begin to collide, they will form bigger and bigger droplets. It's the same thing happening here, but in in uh, in water when the with oil and water, it's mainly the surface tension that causes these to uh, to stick together, whereas in a solar system, it's the gravity that causes these to stick together. So the forces are different, but the result is the same, that you end up with larger clumps of um, of oil, or in our case, there could be gas giants, or it could be, um, or there could be solid planets. And that means that in the early solar system, you would begin to form a lot of very, very small planets in all kinds of weird orbits, right? And these orbits would sometimes cross each other, and the planets would then collide, and they would then begin, I mean, it's basically what we started with, which is two very minute planets, basically just dust, hitting each other, forming a slightly larger one. But of course, as the planets grow larger and larger, these events become more and more violent. Um, which is believed to be the reason why we actually have our moon was created uh, that way, that in the very early solar system, another planet was in our orbit as well. Or, well, I guess it wouldn't really be the Earth because it wouldn't be the size it was today. There were two planets in the same orbit um, around about where the Earth is right now. They collided with each other. A lot of debris was flung into uh, to space, forming a disk around the Earth that would then slowly accumulate into uh, the moon that we have today. And... These um, early events, when the when the planets are colliding um, with each other, is also why you see a lot of the planets being tilted slightly off its um, off its axis. You would expect that if you have a disk, um, you would expect that they will all have a rotating perpendicular to the orbital plane. Um, but of course they don't. I mean, the Earth is tilted. Uh, I can't remember how much it is, but the Earth is definitely tilted, which is also why every time you see a globe that it's always mounted in this um, angled position. That's because that's the way the Earth is actually angled in space. Um, sometimes they might get the angle off or angle wrong, but in general, that's why it is uh, like that. And you can imagine as you have this angled Earth and it's moving around the, the star, with the, if we're living here in the Northern Hemisphere, if the, um, if the rotation at the North Pole is pointing towards the Sun, then we would get a summer, but if it's pointing away, we would get winter. So because of this um, tilting of the planets, we get seasons. And if we didn't have those, well, then the day would always be the same length and there would be nothing like summer or winter and, and it would be a very, very different planet. So because of that tilt, um, we get seasons and the more the planet is tilting, the stronger the seasons, of course, is. And of course, here we are, um, pretty much with a fully formed solar system, of course, after some time. And the star is now in what's known as its main sequence. I'll come back to that in the next video. And this is pretty much where all, the whole thing begins to get a little uh, a little boring because the star is just sitting there in its main sequence. The planets are formed. Not a whole lot of collisions are happening anymore. And so next time we're going to talk about how uh, planets or how so stars die, depending on how big they are and what the, what the different types of, of, um, of lives of, of stars are. But there's one final comment I want to make, and that is if you, of course, you can imagine if this disk kind of formed, you would expect all the planets to be orbiting the same direction around the star and all in kind of the same plane around the star as well. And they will all be orbiting in close to circular orbits. They wouldn't be perfectly circular because of all the collisions and the random stuff that happens there, but they would be close to circular. But sometimes we see what's known as rogue planets. That's the planets that have been formed. Maybe the, the parent star died and the planet was flung into space or it was due to a collision. It was pushed out of the solar system or something similar like that. And we have these rogue planets, which are basically just wandering planets that fly around and doesn't have a star. But sometimes these will come in contact or come in close to another star than the one that were formed around. And they will then be captured. Now, when this happens, they would often be captured in a very... 
um, elliptical orbit, so it would be a very, very elongated orbit. Um, we don't see these planets that often, because, of course, if you have these elongated orbits, they will cross the path of all the other planets. Of course, if they are in the same plane, they could also keep coming in where you would have all the planets in one plane. You could end up having an orbit that goes like up from the plane like that. So it would be all kinds of weird. So if you see anywhere in Elite, I've come across a few. If you ever see a planet that kind of have a weird orbit where it's very, very elongated or it's very off axis compared to all the other planets, then it's probably a captured object or a rogue planet that's been captured into that solar system. So that wasn't originally formed in that solar system. But anyway, I am going to call this video here today. I really hope that you liked this video. If you did, give it a like down below, subscribe to the channel. And until next time, I will see you guys in space.